Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis, and this is going to be my beginner's guide to Season of the Wish. Now, quick intro on the story. At the end of last season, we did raise Savathun. She told us we had what we needed for the uh, ability to enter the Traveler and go through the portal, which we didn't think we did. We figured out it was a wish that we were going to need. You start this season doing a... You literally jump into the season straight into the mission. And you're running through some of the Last Wish raid areas, kind of going back through that. And you're actually going to see where Riven was before. You pull an object from that one. And then we're working with Marasov and the Techians. And what we're doing, spoiler alert, in case you want to see it for yourself and have missed the trailer and everything else. So I'll give you guys like three, two, one. We are working with Marasov, who's hanging out down here in the right in the helm with her Starcat, which there are secret Starcat locations. Check out my other video. If you want to get one of the Starcats in one of the missions that I did, I'll show you guys where that's at. But we are working with, as I told you, spoiler warning, actually Riven. So we had an Ahamkara egg that we rescued from Savathun Spire. That is just an uncorrupted egg and Riven knows that it exists. Now, the key is there are other uncorrupted eggs in Riven's lair, and our goal this season is to gather up the entire clutch of Riven's eggs and use that as kind of a bargaining tool to say, hey, we found them all. She's, this is the spirit of Riven, no longer with us, but the spirit is there, but still able to grant us a wish if we do find all of the eggs, then we're going to be able to use that 15th wish to be able to enter the portal and enter the Traveler and go see what's in the Pale Heart and chase after the Witness. That is the goal of the story. So, kind of cool, actually, working with Riven, Dreaming City. I always kind of like this area. There's cool architecture in here. And Riven is kind of a cool NPC to work with. A little terrifying when you're looking at her this close, but still very cool. Now... When you go through the opening mission, you're going to meet Riven and all that stuff. Then you're going to come back, talk to Marasov, and she is going to give you one. She's going to give you the artifact for the season, so you make sure you get that pretty early on. And then two, you're also going to um, get this quest, wishing all the best. So once you talk to Marasov, you're going to get the quest, you're going to get the artifact, you're good there. Talk to Riven, and you're going to run Riven's Lair. Now, Riven's Lair is one of the two activities this season. They are very similar. The difference is Riven's Lair is like the easy mode version. And then over here, we've got the coil, which is hard mode. Now, Riven's Lair is you're going to go through one pathway. It's kind of random. There are four that I think exist. But you're going to go through a pathway. And what you're going to do, you're going to have like a traversal area that's got some mechanics to it, whether it's like a poison trap or moving walls, or you've got a mechanic where you've got to kind of get a darkness debuff off of you. You'll do that for a section, then you'll get to a mini boss, then you'll do, you'll repeat that kind of trap section in afterwards as well. You'll do another kind of traversal area like that, and then you'll get to a boss fight. When you finish that boss fight in Riven's Lair, you are basically done with that run. It is 1600, you are five below power level, two surges, one threat, probably one debuff. It's match made, it is pretty straightforward. If you don't have that much time, that is probably what you want to like jump into a run. You're like, hey, I got a little bit of time. Run through Riven, Riven's Lair. You'll get a little bit of rewards. Pretty straightforward. When you are running through Riven's Lair for the mission, you're going to be doing it under different names. So you'll see here, it tells us to, you know, search Riven's Eggs and Riven's Lair. We're going to do that. We've run through a Riven's Lair. We don't find any. Speak with Petra and the Hollow Projector. We're going to figure out a little bit more. Then you're going to go run the Blind Well. Now, if you haven't run the Blind Well in a while, you'll, you're not alone. But I will tell you, the Blind Well actually can be started directly from the director. So you don't have to land here, drive all the way in. Just click on it and launch it, and you can go straight into the Blind Well. And if you need to stock up, you might need to grab some Tier 3 charges, some Unstable charges. If you do a Tier 3 and then kick it to Unstable for the Heroic Mode, you can have the progress done in two runs. I don't know if Blind Well is going to be a weekly thing. I'm not entirely sure I want to do Blind Well every week, but we will see. I will tell you, though, the Dreaming City weapons have been updated. They have an origin trait on them. You've got new part combinations. So, And there's also even a seasonal challenge. We'll cover that as well. That Depending on if you run Blind Well and you do the higher tier completion once a week, once you get that seasonal challenge done, you're actually going to be able to get high stat armor. You're also going to be able to get weapons and wish weapons from there as well. So Blind Well, while it may not be the most fun thing that we've done, especially since it's been in the game for so long. The rewards for a couple of runs won't be so bad. 
After that, you're gonna go complete the mission Polysimi. This is the point where I told you I have a video up for the Star Cats. There's hidden Star Cats. There's like two every week. They're gonna be our collectibles this season. One of them I actually found in here. You can get to it through um, the, the Riven's Lair, but it's kind of random if you're gonna get to that certain room. If you do this mission, you'll at least find it straight away. So heads up on that one. And you're gonna listen to Mario and Osiris talk. Speak to Riven, and then we're kind of in waiting until the ley lines line up again so we can go after another eight. That is kind of where we're at for the first week. Now, my goal in this video is I am going to run you through the coil one, one pathway. I'm not going to do a full run. Now, nice thing is with the coil, you can actually run it private. So if you want two people that you want to run with, it scales. Now, I will tell you, outside of a little ammo, and this togetherness buff kind of sucks, that's why you probably want at least two people this week, but even I was able to solo it through two full pathways, like two full traversal, mini-boss, traversal, and then boss. I did two full runs, and the thing about the coil is you do them all together. So if you check the info here, it's you're going to complete four pathways in Riven's Lair all in one run. So this activity might take you 45 minutes. If you're a solo player, it might take you over an hour. So I do recommend a group for speed. But each time you do a pathway, the next subsequent pathway is going to be a little more difficult. So you'll feel it a little bit more as you go through. But as you go through, you're going to be getting wishing glass. One, picking up all the wishing glass from the pots and the enemies. And there's a glass collector. I haven't spotted it, but I did actually have a screenshot of it popping up on screen. Hey, the glass collector's here. It's almost leaving. That one's going to drop a ton. If you can find that thing, that's what's actually going to push you to platinum, but kind of hard to find. The wishing glass you use to buy dragon's gift. So if you complete a full run of traversal, mini boss, traversal, and boss, you'll come back to Riven, where I'm standing now, but in the activity, and you're going to buy dragon's gifts. These are going to be buffs that you can use during your run. A little less damage from bosses, a little more um, damage here. If you get to a tier three one, like you save up a lot of wishing glass, you can have your super recharge 200% faster, stuff like that. And you've also got challenges that can allow you to have access to different, or to have more buffs available on tier two and tier three. So as you're running through, so far there's not a lot of randomness to the buffs that I've seen. Maybe it's a daily rotation, maybe it's a weekly rotation, but you're kind of running through a bit of a progressively longer roguelike and the rewards are fantastic. After each pathway, so after each boss clear of a pathway, you're gonna come back to Rivet and get rewards. But what it doesn't tell you is in each of the traversal sections, you've also got um, like a little side room that will open up if you collect all of the moats in that area, like break every pot basically in the traversal section. And there will be a room with a trap chest and a normal chest, but also a bunch of pots in there. And you're gonna get one or two weapons from there when you clear, and you can do that in the first traversal and the second traversal. And then when you clear the boss, you also get rewards from there. So you can get anywhere from like, one to five weapons from one pathway. And then if you do all four pathways, that is a ton of loot for your time. So it is actually very, very rewarding. There's a platinum one where if you get pretty much every single point possible from the wishing glass pickups, pickups, excuse me, um, you can get into the chamber of wishes, which is pretty high threshold you've got to get to for score, but you're gonna have five more chests to pick from there. The rewards in this thing are really, really good. It's going to take you some time to go through, and if maybe your revives run out, then you get to zero and you get through three runs. Guess what? You still are going to get a lot of re rewards for this. Now, the buffs are a little less strong. Looks like we got two overcharge weapons. Still got a threat. And your run through, like this week, is going to be Divining Hall. First steps, Zensorium, first steps. That's what we're going to be going through every time this week. And then it's probably going to rotate next week as we go through different varieties and all that stuff. So the coil is basically Riven's Lair four times with a slightly harder difficulty, a lot more rewards, and overall just kind of a cooler run through of it. So I will show you at the end of this video full gameplay for kind of one run through for Riven's Lair. So if you want to see that literally just like walking you through step by step, I'm going to go through it solo so you can see everything. I will put that at the end with timestamps like a lot of this, and you can kind of look through the pieces and I'll explain what I can as I go. Now. Riven's Lair, or Riven here, as a vendor, has a couple of things before we jump in. First, you've got your standard rank rewards here. You've got your focusing engrams. As you do seasonal challenges, you're going to have the guaranteed deep sight options. I'll cover those. Uh, you're going to have your undying weapons. You're going to have your wish weapons. And you've also got armor over here. 
once you actually get your ability to focus armor, possible high stats. We'll have to test a few of those and see if they're actually high stats or if the war table is still the best way to go. It's always kind of an experiment. Um, it is pretty straightforward here. You're going to have lair keys. They're automatically redeemed when you open a chest, whether it's in Riven's lair or the coil. If you have keys and you open a chest, you're going to be using a key automatically. So, talking about the seasonal ch challenges, come up here, seasonal bonuses. You are not time-gated on any of these. So, first off, hats off to that. All right, so a quick run-through of the challenges, just so you can keep them in the back of your head as you're running. But as none are time-gated, you can work on all of them. Get a set of armor, then you'll be able to focus armor. So you got to get a few random drops of armor to unlock all the pieces. If you get six weapons from the season, whether it's Wish or Undying, then you can start focusing weapons. You just have to have the weapon drop once to focus it. Uh, if you clear enough pathways in Riven's Lair or the Coil, you're going to be able to focus uh, a, wep a Wish weapon. And that one, the first one each week, is going to be a guaranteed deep sight. If you kill Vex with Undying weapons, you kill enough of them, then your first Undying weapon engram is also going to be a deep sight so that's two deep sights each week reach rank 10 uh you're going to be able to get more wish engrams when you finish an activity uh if you redeem enough keys you're also going to be getting additional wish engrams you're gonna have a ton of these things if you complete the coil with a silver or higher score you're going to unlock the ability to when you use a key each week the first time you're going to get a, a deep sight weapon so literally three a week not going to be that hard to get all these crafting patterns uh complete the blind well on heroic if you're in there do a tier three and somebody kicks it off to heroic then as i said after this first time through with a you'll either get a piece of high stat season of the wish armor or a season of the wish weapon so another roll there and then this one when you purchase the dragon gifts that's in the coil when you purchase enough of them, Tier 2 and Tier 3 are going to have more available options. This one's actually one I'm really excited to see what the new options are. So those are your challenges this season. You can literally do them all on the first day if you work on everything. This one, I just haven't been using the Undying Weapon to kill Vex yet. But if I want to go farm that one, I would go to the Moon, probably. Um, if you guys know what I'm talking about, there's this like respawning section of Vex. So it's on the Moon, and it's back over here. So when you're in Sorrow's Harbor, you're going to go down this way. And then when you get to that first section, so you're going to go through here, kind of through a little bit of a bridge. When you get to the next opening area, not the big planet area, but it looks kind of like the front of the castle. Head left from where you were going, and you'll find Vex over there. It's like a portal. You'll know if you've seen it before. It's a good place to find a group of Vex kind of over and over. Quite a few of them spawn. Not too bad. That is mostly what we got. So when we run through Riven's Lair... You're going to have a little less of the mechanics and stuff, but you'll see some of the rooms that I talk about. The traversal has either poison, it has a buff that is like a darkness debuff, and you need to stand in this little pool of light to clear it off. You're also going to have spikes and moving walls. The spikes will get you, no question about it. They've killed me plenty of times, so just be a little more careful if you're around the spikes. When you go through the coil, that is when you have a chance in the traversal sections to pick up the moats and unlock the side chests because if you have on a chest that has wombo detector or anything that will detect caches like chests you can actually see the chests are behind walls when you're going through riven's lair but there's no way to unlock them in riven's lair the traversal chests only open in the coil as you're picking up the the glass that you're going to use as kind of points but also use that one to buy the dragon's gift the chests are only in here so the coil is a nice thing to do but it is a bigger time commitment so if you guys just want to jump into the game or maybe play along with me, that's totally fine. Uh, but I'm going to run through this just at a slower pace so you guys can see everything. I can explain it as we go. I'm going to try and use a little bit of footage or honestly, more often than not, I'll probably just explain what I'm talking about as we go through. Because the first section is the poison and then you'll see a little bit of each of the other two. So let's jump in and I'll show you how this works. All right, so when you begin, you're going to get a pot here sitting in front of you so this is an example and these are all going to be all of the moats that drop now the fused wishing glass only comes in this room so whatever you get as you go through it kind of turns into a wishing glass and then we come in here you're going to have buffs so tier three is worth 400 can't buy that yet tier two is 250 and then tier one up here is going to be your options now for like a warlock class ability to recharge 300 percent faster getting your well all the time that sounds good Incoming damage from bosses decreased by 20%. That's what I'm going with. And then in damage increased by 25% for all weapons and abilities while airborne. So if you're, you know, consistently airborne, this might be a good thing for you. 
So you're gonna have about a minute to pick your buff so I wouldn't like take too long and dawdle and overthink it because that will go away. And even when you come back in future runs, you do only have a minute. So don't overthink it, it's not that big of a deal. Then when the opportunities are up, you're gonna come over here. One of these plates will pretty much activate your run. If I'm only by myself, there's me, but each person in your party needs to stand on one. And then we're gonna jump in. Now you're gonna have a little story in here, a little lore going on as you run through this first section. This is not any of the mechanics related stuff. This is just walking in a little story beat. You would see it that way. Is it the work of a nostalgic heart or that of a favored listless pet tunneling into the walls? Simply indulging the creative spark, oh mortal mind. All right, so Splinter, Splinter Geode, this is our first section. Now this week we always start on the poison. Now the poison is the green things on the ground. Stuff definitely hurts, so be aware of that, but you do have to kind of work around it. Like that one, you have to touch one of these three plates um, here. Sorry, you have to touch all three plates to activate them. But on this one, you want to literally like jump down to the platform and then get out of the field of poison as quickly as possible. Then you're also going to be looking for pots that are around all through this area to be able to pick up glass. So I can kill a few enemies up here. And I told you, like as a solo player, the scaling is actually decent. So I'm going to drop down, I'm going to touch this plate, and I'm going to activate first for the poison. That's the cloud. Got a few enemies over here. Got a few screams down here. Blow those up so they don't get me. You can actually see one of the moats on the ground. It's just like Gambit. You're going to see the moats on the ground. And these are going to be clear shards. They're worth like 100. And again, there's a poison cloud over there I stood in. Now, for me, drifting apart is not fun as a solo player, but if you're with friends, this won't be so bad. So there's another one where you've got to get to those pots over there, or that platform over there. Avoid the poison. Come over here. you got a few enemies. If I can throw a grenade, hopefully get a few of them. Where the heck did he go? Oh, teleport. Nice, dude. All right, so he went down there. Now this is one of the pots. They're gonna be all over. Some are like half buried in the ground. Probably one over there is. And when you shoot them, usually the shards do not fall off ledges, but if like this one down here, I gotta be a little quick as I come out. You're gonna need to look a little off the beaten path to make sure you find all of the pots. Otherwise you're gonna have an issue getting enough points. So that's another one. Now you'll notice right now, my combo detector shows this chest over here. I'll get those pots in a second and you'll be able to walk in and you'll be able to see it requires a higher score. So then if I go back and I find all of the pots and I get enough shards and collect enough points, then I'm actually going to be able to get into the chest room in there. So here. Now when I get enough points and I find all the little secret hidden pots, so don't run in there towards the final like portal to leave the area. Well, there's gonna be a point. First pathway, a secret chest lies in wait. When that happens, you can run back and get more. And if you are trying to actually get all of the points in the whole run through, trying to get a platinum run, you need to make sure you do this every time completely. So if we come back in here, first you're gonna notice it's gonna be hard to get the points threshold because there's a lot of points in here. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. And I, I even found a revive token in there as well. Now you also notice there's two chests. One has these little holes on the ground. That is what you are going to see if you're running through one of these traversal areas that's not poison, or it's not one of the light buff related ones where you need the basically stand in the pool of light to clear the darkness buff. You just have to do that every so often. The other one is the little spike holes and then moving walls. And the spikes are just insta-lethal. Don't open that chest, it will kill you. Open the other one. Like, prime example, I got two weapons. I got a red border weapon and I got a retold tail, which is a dreaming city weapon. Two weapons. Again, it's one or two that I seem to get from every one of those chests that I open. And you have two traversal sections in each area. When we go through here, we've got a mini boss. 
Now, mini boss is maybe a poor terminology. It's going to be a mini boss level style fight. It's not going to be a full on boss encounter, but you're going to have a little bit in here. So this one, I just have to clear the lair's intruders. So there's a certain number of scorn that I've got to kill in here. Once you kill enough of them, you'll be able to do what you got to do. Now I'm also running Dragon's Breath, which is actually kind of a fun thing to use. It's actually pretty effective. So you're going to get waves of intruders, or you're going to have like a certain percentage that you have to do. But it's just a mini boss encounter section that you're going to have to fight some enemies at kind of this mid-level. So this one is pretty straightforward. Just clear all the enemies and try not to die. But if you do die as a solo player, you are not kicked to orbit. You have the revives. There's no time limit on this activity. So it is really not that big of a deal. And also, if you're in here and you're in a pinch and you have your super, use it because you get a rally flag before the next activity. Same thing, use your heavy ammo because you're going to get a full rally flag to restock. You may as well not be holding on to it and make it take any longer. It looks like we got our third section spawning now. And this just seems like it's going to be three waves of ads. So at this point, I'm just going to pop my super and just melt this entire room. Because it's a little more fun to do it that way. And then we'll get the uh, rally flag before the boss room and go through it. Now, the bosses work differently. Sometimes the bosses have the mechanics of you have a darkness debuff and you got to make sure you stand in light every so often. Sometimes they have the debuff where you get an actual buff. Like, um, if you guys remember the Shattered Throne, you will get a buff where you can do damage to break a shield. But then within 30 seconds, if you don't clear the buff by basically standing in the middle plate, which this room I've seen have that kind of mechanic where you would just jump on the middle plate and clear the buff. If you don't do that, then you'll die. It's not the end of the world, but it's that kind of thing. That is basically mini boss room. Now you'll have different things. I went through on a coil. I'm in the same room, but I fought a slightly different setup. So there's still going to be a little bit of randomness and variety to what you work through. So now we're at the fetid conduit. And this is going to be another poison zone. So just be aware that they're out there. But again, you're always looking for these pots, trying to collect every single one that you can. And again, do your best not to break the little poison areas because you don't technically usually have to. You might feel like you have to, but there frequently is an alternate path that you can go through that allows you to avoid breaking those poison things. You don't have to worry about it. If you get close enough, they're going to go off and they just kind of limits the ways that you can go around the zone. So you're always looking for the platforms that you got to stand on. Always looking for your pots that you can... Uh, break apart to get more of the crystal shards. But this, for example, like, I don't need to get close enough to that to be able to go over there. I'm just going to jump back up and go to that from a different direction so I don't have to deal with that giant poison cloud. But it's also good until you learn to know where everything's going to be. Check if there are any, like, sub-level areas to make sure you're not missing any random pots for points. Or if you're looking for the secret and it hasn't opened yet, it's probably the fact that you have missed one of the little secrets. Like this one, for example, I know is half buried in the ground. So that's one you gotta be a little careful for. Now this one, if I kind of come over here by the wall, it's close to a poison cloud, but you can usually avoid it as well. And again, as a solo player, with some patience, you can actually do it in here. It's just on a week when you don't have that togetherness buff, it's just going to be better. So I don't need to get close to that thing, so I'm going to jump off here to the side. Grab a pot over here. I know my chests are down there, so I know what I'm looking for. That's my second pl pl uh, plate, not portal. Jump up here, you're going to have a few enemies across the way. And I'm not doing like a full guide on this week. If you guys do want to see guides per weekly basis of where everything's at, I can do that. At some point, it's probably going to get a little repetitive, though. So that is all three. 
but we've also got some more pots to gather before we can go back into this room. Now, maybe it's the fact that I've gathered enough throughout the run so far. It's actually open already, so I'm kind of okay there. Again, see all the spikes on the floor? Without the chest sitting on top of it, that's what the floors are going to look like, and you'll always know it's a spike trap kind of traversal area if there are walls that move back and forth as well. So grab all of those. Grab your chest that is not spike trapped. There's armor and a weapon. Same principle. And then if we come up here, jump on back. It's not the end of the world if you die. It is really not. You've got 23 revives, and all you got to do is wait on the timer, even if you're alone. Sometimes they tuck a pot, like, right behind something. Sometimes it's down below. So just, you really want to look for all of them. And if you're with a group, that's kind of where it's easier to take the time to look for everything. If you're match made and people aren't looking, you might have somebody that just goes too fast and you miss stuff. And that can be a little frustrating, but the private option is there basically for that. So now, once you're done with the portal, or you're done with this, there's no other pots or anything anywhere. You're good. You've got your secret area. If you're going to get to the boss room. You're going to have a rally flag. And this boss is going to have a mechanic of where I pick up the buff and then I've got to clear it within 30 seconds once the shields are down. So pervading darkness <clears throat> is removed. So basically it removes all buffs. And then when you walk in, you're going to have these enemies. And then what I'm looking for are bigger guys that are going to drop the little shield things that I'm looking for. So this is the guy I'm looking for, Mephitic Host. He's going to drop this orb, and that's going to give me the ephemeral virus. What that allows me to do is do damage to both the shields. Sorry, I'm trying to kill these two, because what this is going to allow me to do is going to allow me to get my buff. It's going to extend my buff to times two. So that's just going to let me break the shield quicker, probably on more difficult runs. Watch for all the ads we got going on right now, because they're a little crazy at the moment. And again, I'm just I'm doing this solo, so I'm probably being a little more cautious. So now I'm times three. So now I want to make sure I break the shield off the boss. If the shield is off the boss, so the boss shield is down. Now you've got a certain amount of time to try and kill the boss. That's pretty much what we're doing here. So you're going to have ads coming at you. I've got this guy. I'm going to go for... Come down here. I'm going to clear the buff. I just don't want it on me since the shield is gone. I don't need it anymore, so I don't want to die. And then I also want to make sure, get my super off on him if I can. I'm gonna manage all these crazy guys at the moment. Get some damage on the boss. And he's gonna do a little running over there, but I've got him down to pretty low health at this point. I always struggle trying to kill him completely on my first run through, and then I typically just have to get the buff again, which is not the end of the world. So if I can't actually get over here and dump some ammo on him. He's just apparently going to run away from me though, that's fun. You wanna slow down a bit? Be great. Come on. There you go. That is me doing that on my own. Now you notice it took 14 minutes, but I got two weapons. I got two weapons. And then once it's cleared out, I'm gonna be able to come down here and go back. I'm gonna return to Riven. So of all the glass I picked up, this is gonna give me the actual fused wishing glass from all the shards that I've got. Come up here, you're gonna have a minute, so make sure, oh sorry, you're gonna claim your rewards first. So you'll have a chest. When you get through certain thresholds, you might actually have a chest that one shows armor and one shows a weapon, and you can pick. After a while, you may not need the weapons as much, but again, you're calling what you're going for. Now here, you can see I've got 302. So I could buy one, two, and three. I could buy all of these if I want to, uh, or I can buy one of these, or I could wait and save up for something bigger. 
Uh, the idea of I'm not really doing void damage, but might not be a bad idea to change up what weapons I'm using. Stasis damage would be another way to go. Damage to mini bosses, though, would be more. That seems like a good idea. So I'm going to buy that one. Come up here. And then at this point, combatant power has increased so then when i go into the next area enemies are going to be a little bit stronger and you're going to go through all four for you know whatever the week's rotation is going to be and if you can get high enough points and if you can find like the glass collector and that's another thing you want to look for it's probably going to drop like twenty thousand points worth of score so that one's going to be really important to try and get that platinum threshold if you can do all four find the glass collector find everything you're going to be able to get to that chamber of wishes which gives you like five more chests in the end but like even right now i think i got six rewards for 15 minutes nothing else is going to give you six drops so it may be a longer activity but the drops are absolutely fantastic and if the buff was not drifting apart you'd actually probably do the solo with a little patience and a decent build but that is Season of the Wish in a nutshell. Ri um, Riven's Lair is like what I just did, but when I beat the boss, I'm done. I get my rewards and I'm out. The Coil is running through four times, escalating difficulty, but better rewards. And the Coil also has the traversal chests available if you find enough points to be able to unlock each of those rooms. Uh, other than that, you've got craftable weapons for, as I said, Wish and Undying are both craftable. You've got the new weapons from Season from the season but you've got new weapons also in the dreaming city kind of same weapons i would say with the origin perk now and also updated perks you've got those as well to go after and this is kind of the beginner's guide of what your mechanics and stuff are going to be like whether you have the buff that's on you that you have like 30 seconds where you need to clear a shield and then jump off on the middle platform to clear the buff before you die if you've got the poison gas if you've got the spikes and moving plates if you've got the glowing light that you stand in to be able to clear the darkness buff off of you you just don't want that darkness buff to get up to 10x so do it before that that covers most of it and i know this was a longer video but i wanted to give you guys an example and run through just about everything so if i was patient enough i could try and run through the other three pathways all by myself and see how it could go but right now i gotta go render this video so if you enjoyed this one drop a like below leave a comment if you've got anything about the basic beginner part of the season that i may have missed if you want to find me on Twitch or Twitter, it's Ebontis, but right here on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button, hit the alert bell. Thank you guys for the support, and we're almost at 110k, so keep climbing, and thank you guys. Have a good one, and good luck.